Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play Haste to the Wedding. <laughs> Haste to the Wedding is one of the best known jigs and it's very widely played but it was probably written by James Oswald, a Scottish fiddler and publisher and he published it in 1759. Uh, it was popularised shortly afterwards in an operetta in 1767. Uh, the operetta was called The Elopement and it was given words. Uh, it became very popular in English, Irish, uh, Scottish, um, in contra music in America and was one of the very few jigs uh, widely played in Appalachia. Um, it uses an interesting scale, what can be called a hexatonic or six note scale. It's a gapped scale. Uh, so there's a gap and the gap is the seventh. So you've got um, no seventh, like that. Um, it's quite a few tunes like this. You don't really notice the missing notes until you <laughs> look for it and find that it's not there. I'm going to give you two versions of the tune, a slightly simplified version and a, a more complex version with ornamentation. So the simplified version, um, the main change is there's no ornamentation and most of the bars have got at least one quarter note or crotchet in them. And that makes it easier to play and easier to learn. Um, but it's basically the same tune and if you play this along with someone else who's playing the more complex version the two will fit together fine. So let's go through the, um, the simple version, we'll do it slowly and then we'll do it with the backing. So one, two, three, four... Now notice that the bows, uh, the, the ones that are not slurred, are pretty short. If you find yourself doing this, then you're working much too hard and to very little effect. So try and make all of the separate bows really short. I've arranged it so that um, each bar, wherever possible, starts on a down bow. So if there are seven, uh, if there are five notes in a bar, as in the first bar, then it's separate, 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 and then a slur. And if there's six, then as in the second bar, then it's three separate and three slurred. And that makes it nice and easy and predictable. Helps to give you some drive as well. Uh, in terms of fingering, the most difficult bar for beginners is bar 11, uh, where we go here. And um, I would suggest that you put your second finger on for the G, put your fourth finger on, keeping the second finger on for the G, like that. And getting those two notes in tune, because it's quite a stretch, is the most difficult part of the piece. Apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go through it again, and this time we'll do it a bit faster and with the backing.
If you listen to or read other versions of this tune, you'll see that the, some of the fine details can be quite a lot different. Uh, if you uh, analyse, let's say, six different versions on uh, YouTube, you'll find that uh, all six versions are slightly different. Um, but the skeleton of the tune is the same, and when you're playing in a session with quite a few other musicians, then those small changes are not important. And providing you've got the basic notes of the tune right, then it's going to fit fine. Okay, let's move on to the second version which um, has quite a lot more notes because most of the quarter notes or, qua or crotchets have been turned into uh, pairs of quavers. So mostly six notes to the bar. And also we've got ornamentation. So again, we'll go through it slowly. Uh, first time without the ornamentation and secondly with the ornamentation and thirdly with the backing. So, one, two, three, four... <laughs> common thing which is to play like that, play a, a G, F sharp, E like that. Um, I really do prefer the going up to the A. It's just a little bit more spacious to me. Uh, let's do it again. This time we've got uh, a couple of um, cuts and some rolls. In fact they're double cuts. So so slurring into the first note, one, three, open, then a roll, and here again, double cut. last line there. I think that it's more of an English thing to do that kind of break in the note. Uh, I think Irish players tend to do that less and would make it smoother. I think that's to do with dancing. Um, so let's do that again and this time we'll do it with the backing. And incidentally I have videos on the cut and on the roll. So if you're not sure how to do those then do, do check those videos out. video and would like a copy of the sheet music I've been using then do subscribe and send me an email and I will send you a copy. If you're enjoying my videos in general and would like to help support what I'm doing then do please consider joining me on Patreon and there's lots of other benefits there which you can get. Uh, I'm going to play you out with a couple of times round up to full tempo with a slightly freer approach to the ornamentation. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.